All right, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you all about credentialing as a therapist in private practice. You can consider this video like your quick start guide to all things credentialing. By the end of this video, you're gonna know what credentialing is, if you want to get credentialed, where and how to get credentialed, and what to do once you are credentialed. However, before we jump in, if you haven't done so already, please do go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs up button on this video. Only if you want to though, there really is no pressure. And for those of you who have not been here before, my name is Matt, I'm a therapist in private practice. I also own a group practice and I like to make videos just like this to teach people how to run and grow their own private practices. The intention behind all my videos is to provide people with as much free information as possible so that they can start their own practices. I do not like gatekeeping. I really try my best to avoid any sort of gatekeeping and to provide as much information to you guys as possible for free. Without further ado though, let's jump into today's video. All right, so the first question we have to answer is what is credentialing? Many of you might already know what it means, but for those of you who don't, let me just describe it to you quickly. I'll give you the technical definition first. Being credentialed is essentially establishing a contract with an insurance company and that contract states that you will provide mental health services to the people who have that insurance, and then that insurance company will pay you a contracted rate for that service. If we put it simply, being credentialed is the process of being able to take insurance as a therapist. But before we answer the question of whether or not you should or even want to credential, let's run through some basic pros and cons of credentialing. Let's start with the cons. And this is a non-exhaustive cons list. So first off, insurance companies often reimburse a fairly low rate or at least lower than what you would charge a cash pay rate. Second, negotiating with an insurance company can be quite difficult. It's often hard to get your rates raised. So with some companies, you're stuck at a fairly low rate for a long time. Another con is that insurance companies often have a lot of rules and regulations that you have to follow. There's all sorts of rules about the duration of treatment, how long it should be, what kind of documentation you need to provide, what the diagnosis is. I mean, there are tons of rules and regulations that insurance companies require a therapist to follow. Now, some of these make sense and are quite good. However, some of them are nonsensical and just add a lot of extra work for therapists. And this is a major downside of accepting insurance because many of these tasks require a lot of additional time. And what therapist has endless free time to work on admin tasks like that? And in addition to that, insurance companies do have the right to audit your practice. They can see if you're following their rules and regulations, if you're completing all the documentation and doing what they're asking you to do. And if they find that you're not, they can actually ask you to pay them back. But let's talk about the pros for a second. So the pros are that you're gonna help increase access to quality mental health care. Assuming that you are a quality therapist, which I'm sure you are, and if you decide to accept insurance, you now are making quality mental health care much more accessible for people. You're also gonna expand your reach to potential clients. A lot of clients want to use their insurance, which makes sense. And so when they're going onto directories and different websites, they're often filtering for insurance or they're actually looking for therapists that take their insurance. And so if you are a therapist who takes insurance, you are going to open up your network. So it might make it easier to grow and get more clients. Now, like I mentioned before, the decision to take insurance and to get credentialed is certainly a personal one. You have to think about it from multi-dimensions. You have to think about it from a personal level. You have to think about it from a business perspective. You've got to think about it from a client perspective. You really want to think about this holistically and then come up with a decision that's best for you. Now, I will say that when we were talking about the cons, they sound pretty terrible. Um, at the end of the day, if you do decide to take insurance, you know, things like audits are fairly rare. The, the regulations and paperwork that they want you to fill out is certainly not ideal. However, if you get into a rhythm and have good systems in place, it is manageable and you can do it. And also, if you decide to take insurance now, you can eventually not take insurance. So it's not permanent, right? You can take insurance now and then decide to switch off later. You cannot take insurance now and decide to switch onto insurance panels later. So there's flexibility there as well. This is not a one and done permanent decision. So let's imagine for a moment, you've decided you want to get credentialed, you wanna take insurance. How exactly are we going to go about doing this? And now there's a couple of methods that I'm gonna talk about. The first method, and probably the easiest method, is to sign up with a startup company like Alma or Headway. So let's use Alma, for example. You would go online and sign up on their website. 
They would put you in contact with a representative, you would talk to them about their program, and you would fill out an application. And from there, they would do all of the paperwork and credentialing for you. So they already have negotiated rates, they will interact with the insurance company on your behalf. You really only fill out one application and then they do the rest. And and the amazing part is the process is quite quick you are paneled with some insurers in about 30 days. I mean, for some insurers, it can take six months or even longer. So the fact that they can do this for you and do it quickly is really great. Not to mention these startup companies also provide billing tools as well. You also have an easy way to submit claims and bill insurance. It really is quite seamless. The other benefit of startup companies like Alma is that the rates tend to be much higher than those you can get if you contracted on your own. Another benefit of working with a company like Alma or Headway or something like that is that you're typically gonna get paid much quicker than if you're submitting claims on your own. So these startup companies typically will pay you on in a rhythm. They'll pay you once a week or every other week or something like that. And then in addition, if there's any sort of audit or kickback, they can typically help you with that. So you're not left struggling on your own to figure out how to manage an insurance company who's fighting you and, and that kind of thing. For the most part, this method of being credentialed is great. However, there are a few drawbacks. For one, some of these startup companies do require a monthly fee, kind of like a membership, although it does pay for itself quite quickly. Also, if you are looking to expand into a group practice and eventually hire people who are working towards their license, for example, LMSWs, MHCLPs, uh, people who are provisionally licensed, then Alma, Headway, these kind of companies are not gonna work with that. Uh, You have to be fully licensed to be credentialed through Alma. And then finally, if you leave a company like Alma or Headway, then you're no longer credentialed. The moment you leave them, this is the moment you're no longer credentialed and no longer accept that insurance. The next method for getting credentialed would be to simply do it yourself. Now, this method is free, so that's the real benefit here. Uh, And what you would do is you would go online and you would find the provider website for any insurance company and you would begin to fill out their application or call them to determine how you get credentialed. Now, this might seem simple, but it's not. I mean, have you ever interacted with the insurance companies before? It's really difficult. Getting someone on the phone can be really hard. Um, Filling out applications can be really hard. Things are ambiguous and not very clear. Um, So for some of them, it is just a confusing and exhausting process to do the application, follow up, call, and then wait. Now, a couple other benefits are that if you credential on your own, well, then you are credentialed. You're not dependent on a place like Alamo or Headway. However, I will say that when you contract on your own, without a startup company, then your rates do tend to be lower and negotiating can be a little bit harder. However, another benefit is that you can expand into a group practice with some of these uh, contracts if you do it on your own. And some insurers actually allow what's called incident to billing, which essentially allows a supervisor who is supervising a provisionally licensed clinician, like an LMSW, MHCLP, that kind of thing. It allows the supervisor to submit claims for the client who's receiving services from the provisionally licensed therapist. Now that is a head full, a mouth full. Essentially, it allows a a client to see a provisionally licensed therapist and still use their insurance, right? I'll make a whole video about that another time, but it's called incident to billing or supervisory billing. And having your own contract with an insurance company will sometimes allow you to do this. And then another method you can do to become credentialed is to hire a company to do it for you. This is essentially the same thing as credentialing yourself. It comes with all the same benefits. However, you're paying a company to do that for you. Uh, They would essentially come in, help you fill out all the applications, help you with the negotiations, all that kind of stuff. And then once you're credentialed, you're on your own. This method is good. However, it is kind of costly. So some of the companies do charge quite a bit of money to credential you. So now what exactly do you do now that you have a contract with an insurance company and you can accept their insurance? Well, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you go onto all your directories on your website, wherever you are listed as a practitioner and make sure that you indicate that you are now taking insurance and specify which insurances you're taking. This is because, like I said before, many clients are looking for therapists who take their insurance. They're gonna filter results through insurance. So you wanna make sure that on your directory whatever insurance you take is there. A lot of clients are gonna find you that way. This again will expand your reach and open you up to more clients so that you can grow quicker. Next, if you decided to work with a company like Alma or Headway, a startup company, and you got credentialed that way, 
uh, the process of what to do next is actually quite simple. You simply need to learn how to use their platform. If you're using Alma, you legitimately click a couple of buttons and your claims are submitted. A lot of them have tutorials, would probably take you a little while to get adjusted to it, but then from there, it's legitimately a couple of buttons to submit the claim. Now, let's say you decided to either credential on your own or have a company credential you. Well, then the process of what to do next is a bit more complicated. The easiest thing you can do is hire a biller. They typically are really good at coding. They know exactly how to bill, what to bill, what needs to be there in order to bill. They're really good, especially if you have, well, of course, if you have a good one, then they're gonna be good. Uh, But finding a biller would be the easiest thing because you would pay them and then they would do all the claims and submitting and all that for you, nothing to even worry about. However, if you wanna learn how to do it on your own, there is quite a steep learning curve. You have to learn how to submit claims. You have to learn how to code. You have to learn how to do co-pays. I mean, there's a lot of things that you need to learn to do. It's not, it's not something that's unmanageable. I mean, there's tons of ways that you can learn this. And actually, one way you can learn this is by joining my consultation group. This is a group that I moderate. People log in, they ask questions, and I essentially review every single question that comes through and give a very long and detailed response back. In addition, I'll sometimes post webinars and other resources inside of there. And what's really cool is that recently we added a biller to this consultation group. So we actually have the biller who helped me learn billing. She now participates in the group. So she's there to answer questions and point you in the right direction. Uh, She is a really great resource. If you wanna learn more about that and sign up, there's a link down below in the description. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you soon.